On a dark and stormy night, a young woman met a tragic end on the streets. This incident caught the attention of the demon hunter Van Helsing. He found an unextinguished cigar near the corpse, indicating that the culprit was not an ordinary person and had recently left the scene. Van Helsing instinctively turned his head and noticed a figure climbing towards a high building. He quickly rushed to the skyscraper, only to be surprised when the murderer voluntarily revealed himself. You're a big one. I'd hate to be such a nuisance. You'll be hard to digest. The murderer calls himself Hyde the Giant, but his real name is Dr. Jekyll. Van Helsing had been tirelessly pursuing him for brutally murdering over 20 people. However, Dr. Jekyll seemed completely indifferent to this fact and even launched a sudden attack while speaking. Van Helsing drew his guns and aimed at Hyde, but the agile adversary dodged the bullets effortlessly, taunting Van Helsing in the process. Determined, Van Helsing pulled out his spinning wheel and at the moment of Hyde's attack, the wheel sliced through Hyde's abdomen. However, Hyde's thick skin rendered the injury insignificant, and he retaliated by dismantling a large clock and trapping Van Helsing inside. However, when Dr. Jekyll hears the sound of the flywheel spinning, he lifts the clock and discovers a cut hole. But Van Helsing didn't run away. He stayed in the bell and removed one of Dr. Jekyll's arms before he could react. This further enraged Dr. Jekyll, who grabbed Van Helsing and threw him towards the rooftop. Dr. Jekyll followed him with a leap. <laughs> In a dazed state, Van Helsing regained his senses only to be thrown off the high building by Dr. Jekyll. Despite the perilous circumstances, Van Helsing was well equipped. He aimed his grappling gun at Dr. Jekyll and fired, piercing his body before he could evade the attack. <laughs> Although Dr. Jekyll didn't die, he also fixed the falling Van Helsing. Undeterred, Dr. Jekyll tugs on the ropes to bring Van Helsing up. However, this reckless act proved to be his downfall. In the blink of an eye, Dr. Jekyll went from being the victor to the loser. As Dr. Jekyll is much heavier than Van Helsing, Van Helsing can return to the roof safely. Poor Dr. Jekyll lost his grip and slowly returned to his normal form. The only thing awaiting him was death. Van Helsing arrived at the Vatican, where hunting down supernatural creatures was their mission, and now the priest has assigned him to a difficult mission. The Valerius family, on the borderlands of Romania, had been battling the vampire Dracula for generations. He had vowed to God that if they couldn't complete the task, their family's souls would never reach heaven. However, despite their efforts spanning nine generations, Dracula remained undefeated. Only two members of this ancient family were left to save the Valerius family. The priest decided to send Van Helsing to assist in completing the mission, but before he left, the priest gave him a tattered scroll that Valerius had left behind. Though its purpose was unknown, it was surely important. To accomplish this mission, Van Helsing brought along an assistant and set off for Romania to eliminate Dracula. After several days of arduous travel, they finally arrived at their destination. However, upon arrival, they discovered three vampires capturing their prey. These vampires not only possessed the ability to fly but also exhibited incredible strength. Van Helsing swiftly took out his repeating crossbow and relentlessly fired at the targets. Unfortunately, these creatures were agile, and even when struck by arrows, they suffered minimal damage. Instead, the vampire grabbed one of the inhabitants and took a bite, but as the sun emerged from behind the clouds, the three vampires suddenly vanished. It turned out they were extremely fearful of sunlight. However, this reprieve did not last long. As the dark clouds covered the sun once again, the vampires emerged from a nearby well and snatched a woman named Anna. Anna managed to draw a dagger from her belongings and free herself from the vampire's grasp, but she fell into the clutches of another vampire. At the moment Anna was about to be taken away, Van Helsing adjusted his crossbow to a single-shot mode, aimed at the vampire, and decisively released an arrow. It didn't kill the vampire, but it did save Anna. <laughs> But even so, one of the vampires landed in front of Van Helsing and slowly took on human form. It turned out they were Dracula's brides, who came to the town every month in search of delectable prey. Witnessing the vampire's audacity, Van Helsing's assistant, Carl, handed him holy water, but another vampire intercepted him halfway. Van Helsing had no choice but to run towards the holy water in the church. As he dipped his crossbow into the holy water, 
He aimed at his target and shot multiple arrows in rapid succession. Marishka, unable to dodge in time, was impaled on the wooden structure and slowly turned into ashes, completely disappearing from this world. <laughs> The remaining two vampires, seeing the situation, hurriedly fled, perhaps sensing Marishka's death. Dracula leaped out of his coffin in a fit of rage, seeking revenge for his deceased wife. Dracula planned to launch a full-scale retaliation against humanity. He sent his werewolf minions to gather information on Van Helsing, as he was the one who had slain one of Dracula's brides a feat unprecedented in centuries and earned the admiration of Anna. Anna invites Van Helsing to the castle, and Van Helsing realizes that Anna is a descendant of an ancient Romanian family. After their conversation, Van Helsing was allowed to rest at the castle, but in the middle of the night, Anna heard a strange noise and turned around and a man appeared before her. His name was Velkin, he was Anna's brother. Velkin wanted to reveal Dracula's secrets but lost control and transformed into a werewolf before he could finish speaking. <laughs> Hearing the commotion, Van Helsing rushed to the scene, but Velkin, still retaining some sanity, quickly fled the castle. It turns out that before Van Helsing came here, Anna and her brother were fighting Dracula together. However, Velkin had been bitten by a werewolf while protecting Anna, causing him to fall into a river. Being bitten by a werewolf also turns you into a werewolf. As Velkin was Anna's only remaining family, she was devastated by his condition. Aware of the danger posed by werewolves, Van Helsing planned to hunt them down, however, Anna stops him because she has heard that Dracula has a cure for the werewolf curse, since they are both descendants of Valerius. Van Helsing decided to help Anna find the antidote, so they went to Dracula's lair together, but to their surprise, they made a shocking discovery. The dense egg sacs in front of them are actually the offspring of vampires. Dracula, being an undead creature, was unable to procreate naturally, which frustrated him as a father. To rectify this, he instructed Igor to use scientific means to resurrect his offspring. Before the experiment began, Dracula intended to use the werewolf's unique physiology as a test subject. As lightning struck the castle, the machinery attracted the lightning's energy. Velkin, bound at the base of the tower, suffered under the relentless onslaught of electricity. When enough energy had accumulated, Igor activated the switch causing a surge of electricity infused with the power of the werewolf to course through the numerous vampire eggs. But it wasn't long before Van Helsing, sneaking in, realized something was wrong. He digs into the egg sacs and is shocked by what he sees. As the egg sacs ruptured one by one, the vampires came back to life to aid their rapid growth. The brides led them to feast on fresh blood, terrorizing the nearby town. People scattered in fear, but many humans became the vampire's prey. Just as they were about to retreat, the newly resurrected vampires inexplicably exploded and perished. <laughs> Igor analyzed the situation and concluded that the werewolf's power was insufficient to sustain the vampire offspring. He believed that finding the key to resurrection would prevent such a problem from occurring again. Speaking of the key of resurrection, that was a few years ago. Dr. Victor Frankenstein and the bodies of seven of his victims created a being with a new consciousness. He was known as Frankenstein's monster, which is the same resurrection key we mentioned earlier, specifically designed to create tools for resurrecting vampires. However, at the moment of his success, Dracula chose to kill Dr. Victor Frankenstein, despite being newly conscious. Frankenstein's monster knew that it was Dr. Victor Frankenstein who created him. He first attacked Dracula and then held Dr. Victor Frankenstein's body as they both fell into a sea of fire. Now, to create such a Frankenstein's monster, Igor doesn't have the ability to do so. However, all of this was overheard by Van Helsing, who quickly left with Anna. On their way back to the castle, they fell into a hidden pit and were inexplicably attacked. The one attacking them turned out to be the Frankenstein's monster who had fallen into the sea of fire. The fire didn't burn him to death, so he had to hide underground to avoid being discovered by Dracula. Frankenstein's monster may look evil, but he hasn't done anything wrong. While they were talking, Velkin found this place by smell, to prevent Frankenstein's monster from falling into Dracula's hands and to prevent the resurrection of countless vampires. Van Helsing planned to send him to the Vatican, where there would be enough manpower to protect him. However, while en route, 
The Bright pursued them and launched a sudden attack on Van Helsing, due to the lack of time to turn, the carriage drove onto a broken bridge, although Van Helsing managed to leap to the other side, the carriage was left hanging, and it quickly plummeted into a deep ravine, the Bride, in order to ensure Frankenstein's monster's safety, flew forward to rescue him, however, when she opened the carriage door, she found it empty, with only silver stakes specifically designed to deal with vampires, until the vampire bride reacts, but by then it's too late. Van Helsing, on the other hand, gave a heartfelt smile, it turned out that Van Helsing and Anna were in separate carriages, the real Frankenstein's monster was on Anna's carriage at that moment, however, just as they rejoiced, the werewolf followed closely behind, at the moment the werewolf lunged with his bared fangs, Van Helsing timely shot a silver bullet from his hand, causing the werewolf to fall powerless to the side, as Anna approached to observe, she discovered that although Velkin had escaped the werewolf curse, he had paid with his precious life, Anna intended to blame Van Helsing, but she discovered that Van Helsing had been scratched by the werewolf and wouldn't last long before turning into a werewolf himself, while Anna was at a loss for words, she turned her head and was knocked out by Elera, who then took her away from the place, to save the last descendant of the Valerius family, Van Helsing returned to the town once again, but before that, he needed to hide Frankenstein's monster, then, Van Helsing, accompanied by his assistant Carl, went to rescue Anna in secret, they infiltrated the castle and found Anna with Dracula, Van Helsing uses the ropes to get to Anna and get her out of the way, however, Dracula remained calm as he had already sent someone to track Van Helsing. The moment Van Helsing left, they captured Frankenstein's monster Van Helsing! With a large number of vampires pursuing them, Van Helsing had no choice but to flee. Carl left a powerful prop behind, and the moment the vampires came after him, they were killed by the rupture thing. Van Helsing noticed that Frankenstein's monster was being moved, he tried to intervene but was blocked by an iron gate, he then saw them boarding a large ship and leaving, Van Helsing didn't want to give up, but he didn't know where to look, it was Carl who provided a crucial clue that revealed Dracula's secret, when they returned to Anna's home, Carl found a portrait of Valerius, who was not only Anna's ancestor but also Dracula's biological father, Dracula made a deal with the devil after his death, Condemning himself to live in darkness and sustain himself by drinking blood, Valerius felt ashamed to have such a son and went to the Vatican to seek forgiveness from the Pope. He swears that if he doesn't kill Dracula, their souls will never reach heaven. However, Valerius ultimately couldn't bring himself to kill Dracula and instead locked him in a cold castle with a one-way entrance, with a gate that allowed him to enter and not leave. But the devil granted Dracula wings, allowing him to escape any restrictions. Now, no one could find the entrance to the castle, thus, for nine generations, they failed to kill Dracula, however, Anna remembered that her father used to stare at a mural and ponder, Van Helsing approached the mural and noticed a missing piece at the bottom, which reminded him of the broken scroll given to him by the priest, he put the pieces together, completing the mural, as the pattern faded away, a mysterious door appeared, they passed through the door and found themselves in a snowy land, with the icy castle perched on top of a mountain, looking at the frozen gate, Carl didn't know how to enter, however, Van Helsing knew that the werewolf power in his body was about to become unstoppable, so he decided to use it right now, while still in control of his sanity, Van Helsing intended to use this power to destroy Dracula. They arrived at the castle and first discovered Frankenstein's monster tied up, Frankenstein's monster told Van Helsing that the curse of the werewolf could be lifted with an antidote, immediately, Van Helsing grabbed Igor and made him lead the way to find the antidote, they split into two groups, Van Helsing went to rescue Frankenstein's monster, while Anna and Carl searched for the antidote, when they arrive at the chamber where the antidote is stored, Igor suddenly lowers the bars, making them Alira's dinner, however, Anna pushed over the container holding the antidote, not realizing that it contained highly corrosive salt acid, Anna poured some of it onto the iron bars, while Carl managed to escape with the antidote, unfortunately, Elera captured Anna just as Carl escaped. And I say you can go when you're dead! <laughs> Meanwhile, Igor caught up with Carl, wielding a weapon charged with lightning power, forcing Carl to dodge his attacks. On the other side, Van Helsing found Frankenstein's monster, but before he could free him completely, lightning struck from the sky.
causing the resurrection power within Frankenstein's monster to extend to a hidden chamber in the castle. <laughs> There were tens of thousands of egg sacs, and with the power of resurrection, the little vampire was perfectly resurrected. It's just that it's going to take some time to break open the follicle, while Dracula waits for the children to come back to life. He accidentally discovers Van Helsing, Dracula's anger was so great. He took on the form of a demon, as Van Helsing continued to free the ropes. Dracula launched a sudden attack, causing Van Helsing to fall from a great height. Meanwhile, Frankenstein's monster, though saved, slipped and grabbed onto an electric wire, sliding towards a stone bridge. Fortunately, Frankenstein's monster's arrival helped Carl escape his predicament. Igor, with the lightning weapon, fell into a deep abyss entangled in the electric wire. At that moment, as Anna was about to be devoured by Alera, Frankenstein's monster reappeared and intervened, stopping Alera. Frankenstein's monster held off Aylera while Anna hurriedly brought the antidote to Van Helsing. Anna ran towards Van Helsing, but Aylera caught up with her once again. Luckily, Carl threw a silver stake just in time, ending Aylera's life. However, it was now exactly midnight, and Van Helsing's werewolf curse could no longer be suppressed. <laughs> Dracula, in his demonic form, engaged in a fierce battle with Van Helsing. Although the fight seemed evenly matched for a while, Van Helsing's werewolf power proved to be stronger. Even when Dracula tried to fly to higher ground, Van Helsing easily caught up with him. As the battle raged on, Van Helsing's werewolf nature gradually gained the upper hand, leaving Dracula with no choice but to dodge his attacks. In the end, Van Helsing opened his mouth wide and delivered a final blow, ending Dracula's life. With Dracula destroyed, the recently resurrected vampire offspring withered away like fading flowers, their lives short-lived. It was supposed to be a perfect ending, but Van Helsing's werewolf power could not be contained. Anna wanted to inject him with the antidote, but Van Helsing, in his uncontrollable state, ended up biting and killing her. When Van Helsing finally regained his senses, he realized that Anna had saved him at the last moment. Unfortunately, Anna did not survive. Although she was the last member of the Valerius family, she successfully helped fulfill the nine generations' wish of the Valerius family. Finally, all the souls of the Valerius family could ascend to heaven, and thus, the movie comes to a close. Van Helsing premiered in 2003 and was a high-budget fantasy extravaganza. With an investment of one, six billion dollars, the film's visual effects were stunning and realistic, making it a masterpiece that is still unmatched today. The movie combined elements of fantasy, magic, science fiction, action, and thriller. In addition, the director has an eye for casting leading ladies, and Kate Beckinsale is one of those famous beauties. The three vampire brides were also captivating, capturing the attention of many movie fans whenever they appeared on screen. I do not know if you will be like this in front of the video, 